Hey guys, it's Jenny. Today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of growing Dendrobium nobili type orchids in a home. Now since I have my nobili still in bloom here, I think it's a great idea to tackle this one next in our little series. And if you missed my previous videos on the series, check them down below in the description. I made one for Phalaenopsis, Cattleyas and also Vandas. So today it is the turn of the Dendrobium nobili. It's hard to make a Dendrobium overall pros and cons because they're just so different between them. So we kind of need to break them into sections. One of the most popular Dendrobiums on the market is definitely the Nobili and it is the season to find it in bloom in the stores. So the first pro, as I was saying, you can find it in flower shops and garden centers. This is not a collector's item, let's say. You can find quite a few representatives of the Nobilis in the flower shops and garden centers. You don't need to go to a nursery. And we will get to those orchids which you cannot find in flower shops or garden centers. But so far, let's just take the popular ones. So the Nobili is quite a prevalent presence in flower shops and not only, even IKEA. In Europe, we can find this orchid not only in designated places such as flower shops, but also supermarkets. Yes, some supermarkets sell flowers around here and along the very popular Phalaenopsis, sometimes you can find the Nobili as well. Don't expect much variety, but it's there. So if you're looking to start the journey with a Nobili Dendrobium, generally speaking, you don't need to go to a nursery to find it. Ordering from online nurseries or going there can be daunting for some of us and some of us really don't have any nurseries in our areas. None of the two countries where I lived in had any orchid nursery, any orchid show, any orchid something. Some of you cannot imagine a world like that. So we actually rely on the flower shops, uh, markets and all of those things. A second pro of this orchid is the price. As I was saying, since it's being sold in supermarkets and garden centers, it will not cost you a lot, a lot of money. These markets are really not designed for plant lovers or orchid lovers in general. They're designed for people who want to get a beautiful plant in their home or gift a plant and orchids fit right in. The Nobili is pretty much the same price as a Phalaenopsis would be. And when it runs out of blooms, it typically does get discounted, so you can purchase it at a discount, but you'll need to wait for the blooms. So from the price point of view, it's a really affordable orchid for the vast majority of us. Which is fairly great because when you buy an orchid, you usually buy two. A third pro for this orchid is the ease of care. Just like the Phalaenopsis, this is one of the easiest orchids you can purchase and enjoy and grow in typical home conditions. You don't need a greenhouse, you don't need to raise humidity necessarily or change your home environment for this orchid, no. It's pretty much exactly like a Phalaenopsis orchid with the difference that it does enjoy more light than a Phalaenopsis. But don't imagine Vandalite or anything of the sorts. It does very, very well in a Eastern uh, exposure, even a Southern exposure. In the middle of summer, you might want to shelter it a little bit, depending how hot it gets in your house, in your room, and so on. It's usually fairly resistant when it comes to burns, unlike the Phalaenopsis orchid. This guy can actually withstand quite a lot of heat. In my new climate, I did experience uh, sunburns. In my older climate, I never did, but here I did. So beware, in very, very hot climates, it can get burned. Don't overdo it in the middle of summer with the sun. Other than that though, the brighter the better, but if you cannot provide Vandalite, that's typically all right for the nobly type Dendrobium. Watch ring is again a little different than the Phalaenopsis. The nobly Dendrobiums have a very specific pattern of growth. Meaning, in the warmer months they grow, in the colder months they take a break. They don't actually go dormant, but they take a break from vegetative growth. So in the warmer months it does require a lot of water, which can be good for those of you who actually like to water your orchids, who are more prone to overwatering. let's call it like that. This orchid, provided that it has airy medium, it is still an epiphytic, will enjoy tremendous amounts of water. It's really, really hard to damage anything, even in organic medium. As I was saying, as long as you maintain the medium airy. Humidity has never been an issue with this orchid, even in my very dry summer months in my previous setup, I had 20-30% humidity. This guy didn't mind at all, as long as I maintained it watered. And temperature, again, is really not an issue when it comes to extremes. This is a very, very temperature tolerant orchid, both in the warm section 
and in the very cold section as well. However, this orchid does have a particular aspect that you need to keep in mind. It's the rest thing. I will not go into the details right now, but I will share with you in the description down below my care tutorial with these orchids. I've been growing them for about five years now, so do check that out down below. And the last pro that I will talk about is fragrance and appearance. Why not? I mean, all orchids are pretty, but the noble dendrobiums can be really, really pretty sometimes. And most of them are fragrant. Combine the two and you have something beautiful. Unlike the Phalaenopsis, which are absolutely gorgeous as well, but most of them lack a fragrance, with Nobilis, most of them have a fragrance and beautiful appearance. So managing to have something like this for years and years and bloom for you every year and put out that wonderful springy, kind of like fragrance, is just great in my opinion. It's one of the things that I like most about the Nobilis. Some individuals have a more powerful fragrance, others a more mild fragrance, but as I was saying, generally, most of them are fragrant and they have beautiful fragrances. They also have an easy to like fragrance and overall with the display, I think it just goes really, really great. So these have been the pros. Not many pros, right? Sally, we do have more of the cons. So let's get to the interesting bit. Con number one, size. Most Androbium nobly orchids are big. They can have fleshy pseudobulbs or thin pseudobulbs, but they usually tend to take a lot of space on a horizontal unless you do something about it, unless you tie them. Even if you tie them, in a few years, not a whole lot of years, you can get quite a bushy plant. Some nobilis are also very, very tall, such as my Aurora and the yellow nobili that I recently purchased. When these orchids have leaves, they are even more bushy, and when they have flowers, again, they become even more bushy, but we don't mind the flowers. Overall, the nobili generally is not a tiny orchid. I have never seen miniature nobilis, I've only seen, let's say, medium size to big size nobilis. And when I say medium size, I don't mean tiny or just decently small. No, they're the size of cat as even bigger than that. The big ones, they can be really, really tall. So this is the first con, in my opinion. It's the thing that, let's say, I had most trouble with. Where do I put my nobilis? I don't have space for them anymore. They're really big plants. So you kind of need to think about the space and make a plan when you decide to purchase a nobili or two, because they're not tiny. Second of all, the rest. This might not be an inconvenience for many of us, but the title of this video is Pros and Cons of Growing in a Home, right? What home has cool downs in winter time, unless you put them on your balcony? But what if you don't have a balcony? What if you don't live in a region that experiences a colder winter? So if you know a thing or two about the Nobilis, you already know that they require a cool down in the winter time. For many hybrids, it doesn't have to be a very drastic cool down and they can very well grow without much of a cool down, but they will get deseasoned sometimes. They will not bloom profusely and have a nice display if they don't experience at least something to tell them this is winter, that one was summer. And usually temperature does it for them along with withholding the water and the shorter days. But what if you live in a climate that doesn't experience that? Or you have a home, an apartment, and you cannot really provide the rest. As I was saying, the hybrids can be grown in a home quite okay, and sometimes they can even bloom, but they might experience all sorts of anomalies if you don't give them the rest, such as continuous growth, continuous vegetative growth, that is, which means less blooms or no blooms, or a sort of exhaustion of the plant and blooms in the middle of summer when they don't last or they blast or things of the sorts. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes you can be in luck and have a beautiful nobly without a winter rest blooming and having no issue this year. We don't know what's gonna happen next year though. I've had nobilies grown in the same climate and performing a little bit different because each individual itself is different, not to mention the variety. They're not all identical between them, even though they belong to the same family. So you don't know how they're gonna act. The best way to make sure that a nobili grows when it's supposed to grow in the warm months, when it has the most abundant light and good temperatures for growth, is to try to season it and to try to offer cooler temperatures in winter time and uh, warmer temperatures in summer. And that could be a problem for home growing. So for me, that is major con number two. Major con number three. 
Variety. We've talked about availability and how you can find at least a few of them on the market in supermarkets and garden centers, but if you want some variety, you kind of need to go to the garden center or at least wait for an incredibly good luck at the home improvement store or the garden center. I got my Aurora from a home improvement store, but I've never seen it for sale since. If you want variety, you kind of need to go to the nurseries and specialized shops for orchids. And even if you do that, again, you will not have great, great variety. Yes, you have about 30, 40 varieties, but let's think about the Phalaenopsis. Let's think about the Cattleyas, which in my opinion overtake the Phalaenopsis due to the fact that they can be crossed in between varieties. So you have intergenerics. With Androbium nobilis, you cannot have necessarily intergenerics. So the variety overall is extremely, extremely limited in comparison to other orchids in my opinion. I'll share with you down below a link where you can find the most variety that I personally found. I think this is all there is on the market. Hopefully I'm wrong. The Yamamoto website. The Yamamoto company is a very well-known company for breeding and obtaining beautiful and amazing hybrids. And I think they obtain new hybrids every year, but the production is not what you think. It's really not that great. So overall variety with the Dendrobium nobili is lacking in comparison to other orchids, but it's quite okay in comparison to others. You know how it is. But since we have the Catley as reference, you know, I cannot say great variety. Mm, no, not so much. And a fourth con and the last one I will talk about, and I'm not sure if we have the same number of pros and cons. Anyway, I think the gravity of the cons is a little bigger than the pros, sadly. Anyway, the last con is that they only bloom once a year, and by this I mean a main flush. Yes, with some hybrids and particularly the de-seasoned ones, you can have a few flowers or flushes here and there in the year, but it doesn't really happen all that often. And if your orchid is completely, completely de-seasoned and a little bit set back, no flowers for you for that particular year. You have to wait another year because nobilis usually bloom after the winter rest. The cool temperatures, the shorter days perhaps, the lack of fertilizer tells them to start preparing buds, not new growth, not vegetative growth. So if you don't have cool downs multiple times a year, which is not recommended necessarily, you will generally and normally have only one flush of blooms per year. Now these blooms, don't imagine they're like Phalaenopsis blooms, they don't last all that long. A flush of blooms lasts anywhere from one month to a month and a half to maybe even two, depends how fast the buds open. So no, it's not an extended blooming time and no, it's not a perpetual bloomer, it's a one time a year bloomer. And overall with the other cons, doesn't look all that great for the nobly, does it? But here I am owning six of these nobilies. What gives? Well, I love them. Yes, they're big. They require a lot of resources, from fertilizer to watering to space. Yes, they only bloom once a year and when they bloom, you know, I have to act fast and film and talk about them because then they're gonna be gone in a month and I have to wait another year. With all of these cons, I just love nobilies. And the only reason why I only have six is space. Look at this guy, it is just humongous. If I would have more space inside the greenhouse, not outside, I would probably get more. So I'm working on space, but yeah. Overall, the fragrance, the way it looks, the fact that it is easy to care for, is just, let's say, hassling. That's the only issue with it. It's a great orchid to have. And if you have one or two, I think you'll do great with them and you'll be able to enjoy them year after year. But if you want a whole collection of nobilies, there is some investment to do in shelving and in water and fertilizer and so on. So overall, even though the cons do weigh more than the pros, in my opinion, of course, not everybody has to think that way. I still love them. I still have them. And when I will see another one that I don't have, one that I don't typically see, I'll buy it because I love nobilies. And that's how orchids work. They're not necessarily the most comfortable things sometimes, but we just love them so much, don't we?
Anyway, so this has been the pros and cons of the Dendrobium Noboli. Let me know down below if you have more pros or more cons. What did you experience with them? So that we have more opinions and new orchid growers can have a more detailed picture of what a Noboli is to live with. Alrighty guys, you know the drill. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye!